Hey guys, it's me, Justin. I I know it's been a while since I've done my reviews lately, but I figured since I was going to do this review last week, but some things that came up, uh, me and my friend here, Eddie, we went and seen, uh, yeah, this is, this is my good friend, Eddie. We're, we're going to do a co-host review and this time. We're, we went and seen the amazing Spider-Man two last weekend and we meant to do this review last weekend, but there were some things that came up. We didn't really have time to do the review, but I figured we'd finally give our approach and, if you like this film, that's fine. I mean, I'm not gonna argue. This is this is just a personal opinion. So, for those of you who like the film, more power to you. But this is gonna be a very spoiler review heavy review. So if you don't want to watch the video, uh, skip ahead or turn it off because it's gonna be a very long epic rant. So, what was your thoughts? Well, got a lot of problems with this film. Um, let's. Where should we start at? Well, let's see. We let's we. What was your thoughts on the first film? Uh, all right, going back to Amazing Spider-Man one, uh, good film, and I I, I liked it as a remake and everything. Uh, for but, a reboot or for a reboot, yeah. Uh, it was a really good movie, but uh, for you who haven't seen Spider-Man two, uh, prepare. I mean, I don't know. Everybody's got their own opinions, but. There's gonna be there's a lot of disappointment with the second one. Yes, there uh, this is. is a disappointing movie. Um, uh, there's a lot of problems. We're gonna discuss a lot of problems. This isn't like something's gonna be one or two problems. Uh, we're gonna have to start. It's hard to start which problem. Which problem in this movie? Yeah, <laughs> because I man, when I went and seen this film for the first mm -hmm. time, I was like, okay, you know, I had some problems first because my biggest thing when I seen the first film, I was like, okay, I understand they're doing a reboot for the first one because I know a lot of people didn't like the first three movies. Well. Because I'll be honest, I do like the first two movies, but I had problems with the third movie. I'll give you that. But with the reboot, I was like, okay, well, they'll probably just do things again like they did with the first movie. Which... The reboot, I actually kind of liked it. I do like how they build up with the story, and I do like how they kept the villain mind. Yeah. This is not, this is supposed to be the first one, not two, three. We're not trying to get too epic with this one. All right, let's see. Let's talk about Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, I mean, just one more more. I, I, I was just going to say that my biggest thing with the first Amazing Spider-Man was that I, even though I liked the film the first time I watched it, because I did a midnight screen review a couple years ago when it came out. I know you can't really see the quality of the video because I shot outside my back porch. It was yeah. one of those things. I was like, okay, well, I'm using my other camera. So yeah. my biggest thing was that I liked what they were doing, but at the same time, I had problems with the origin. Because the origin was basically, they were doing the first movie again, but like changing certain things. But it was like, okay, we don't really need to see an origin of Spider-Man if we pretty much already saw it in the first movie. Yeah. The, the, yeah. I mean, I know it's a reboot, but it's like, you could have made it start out like, it's Spider-Man, but already started out as Spider-Man. Kind of like we did with the original Batman film. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, they did have some, uh, on Amazing Spider-Man 2, they did, or uh, the first one, my bad. Um, they do have kind of where... They're kind of copying from the first Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, ben Barker's yeah. death. You can tell it. it is still... It's not the same as how he died in the first one, but it's still definitely the same in a way. Yeah. Because he does get shot. He does die by a guy that was robbing the store. Yeah. Okay. Kind of copying off the first one when he robs the... Uh, the... Uh, the... Uh, was it? Gambling thing where they're wrestling. Yeah, that's right. Part. But in the second one, they change it to the uh, gas station, but it's still kind of the same. Yeah, so I mean, it does. Got I mean, college, my biggest yeah. thing is that I liked what they were, my biggest problem was the origin part. Because what I liked the most was how it still had a good back, like build up to when he lost his parents. And yes. and again, people, this is going to be a spoiler head review. So if you don't want to, yes, like I said, spoiler, spoilers. This is going to be a big spoiler. Yeah. So. so, but my biggest thing with the first one was that I liked the kind of the suspense there again. Like you see more backstory with his parents, like you didn't yeah. get in the original film. So yeah. I, I'll give them that part. Yes. And I admit that. Going into it, I was kind of worried about Andrew Garfield, but I thought he did a good job. Yeah, I was actually got to agree with you on that. I was actually kind of yeah. Worried. I didn't I didn't think he could be rightfully cast as Spider Man, but you know what? I'll give him this. I like. Him. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's a good actor. I mean, I, I know a lot of people don't like Tobey Maguire. I'm not saying he's better than Maguire. I'm just saying I like both of them equally. You know, they're not any worse or any better than the other one. Yes, yeah, so they both got their pros and cons. Yeah. To the now here's a here's where it's going to be with the second one because I'll be honest, going the second one, I actually was going in open mind on this one. Uh, I, I was, didn't. I was going open minded, but I also thought because how big Spider Man is the series, I didn't think they would. Part of my language, fuck this up that yeah, bad. Yeah, they, they did. They did a they lot. Of disappointed me. I went in there like, yes, can't wait to see it, and then I left out like, 
Yeah, you were pissed. I remember. I remember you come out theater like, oh my fucking god, what the fuck did they yeah. do to this movie? Yeah. Because let alone, I looked at him about an hour and thirty minutes into the movie and like, when is the action going to start? Yeah. By because, the way, this movie is. I'm going to start out by saying that uh, most of it is shot kind of like romantic action. It but is it's too romantic. Yeah, it's it too overboard. Now, look, I know a lot of people had the same issue with the originals trilogy because it's really the originals had too. It was all yubby yubby yabba blah. I love you, love you, love you, love this, and then action scene. Happens. But the thing was, I can buy that because they didn't they didn't overdo it too much as much as they did the third one. First two yeah. movies, yeah, they still did that, but it was still there was a lot of shit. More shit was happening. Yeah. With this one, well, first of all, I would figure okay. When I went to this film, I wasn't expecting much. You know, right. I figured, well, going by the trailers I seen, I figured it was going to be like, you know, you know, they were kind of updating some things, they're making the story a lot more crafted. And my biggest thing going into it was that the fact they crammed too many fucking villains there. But after watching it, I was like, yeah, I did kind of have the wrong reaction because they didn't even do that shit right. No, they didn't even cram them. Um, well, let's start from the start. Let's start let's from start the beginning movie. because. There's a lot of There's problems. a lot. This is one of these movies that we're probably going to be sitting here about, what, 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah, we're gonna, this is going to talk be, to you for This is going to be a pretty big rant because uh, he, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't like the film either, but he was pissed. I was like, he, he was, was more upset than I was. Um, let's start out. Like, with the beginning, like, with when, the he's, beginning. when he's at, because the, the, the whole thing is that, you know how you've seen the trailers, you see that... Uh, there's more backstory of his father, yeah. like because we see in flashbacks that his his uh, his dad was on like a trip. Yeah, you know. I mean, we'll give him the beginning. The beginning started like it was gonna be something because you know at the beginning, like we get said, spoiler alert, uh, where the plane crash. Yeah, it doesn't know. They the the whole thing is that okay, Peter Parker's father, Richard Parker, he's on this trip going out of the country, uh, or he's on like some kind of mission or something. He does this video that's explained later on that. Uh, apparently, what was it? He was like making his own kind of spiders or something. He was um basically. We find out that Norman Osborn, or let's start Oscorp. With, uh, Oscorp. Let's start off with his father. Uh, what's his father's name again? Norman Norman Osborn. No. Um. Oh, Richard. Parker. Richard Parker. We st we find out that Richard Parker actually was making Oscorp for good. He was he was making a uh, kind of like uh he he made the company to to research on curing diseases. Right. Uh, we do find out that uh, Norman Osborn had him killed. It does have him killed. And Norman, it's because Norman Osborn wants to turn Oscorp into a military eye, military, you know, military right. weapons. They want to just pretty much, like, make evil. They're making pure evil. But uh, but uh, Richard Parker, he does, de he does destroy the spiders. Uh, he gets rid of them. Um, he pretty much he didn't want nobody uh, knowing yeah. what he was trying to do. He was trying to hide, but he was doing it for mm. good. He was doing it for good. Right. Norman Osborn, you know, he wanted to transfer, like I said again, to militarize. Right. He wanted to make pure evil enemies. He was turning bad. He was turning he was. into. It does describe that um kind of like a. Mad scientist. A yeah, mad it's, scientist. It's that turns. same kind of story you see with like earlier films when you know where you have someone start out good, but they're also trying to do as the story progresses. You're starting to see a lot more like like their motive is pretty much corrupt. You know, they they turn kind of evil. Now, here's my here's one of my biggest things with this film because now, first of all, for those of you who have seen the trailers. You know how they promote electro vent uh sorry not film that's that's a different story uh electro green goblin and rhino well guess what in this film you get about ninety percent electro and then ten percent uh Harry or sorry not Harry well you green do goblin. you, you kind of get nine percent Harry and then you get one percent green goblin yeah and you get zero point five percent. Uh, Rhino. Rhino. I will say this: if you're trying to watch the whole movie, you're probably like me, but like, hey, when's Rhino coming in? We'll wait till credits because that's when he comes in. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, they promote him, but he's at when the damn credits are pretty much rolling. Yeah, because and another thing too that's very bad, well, not misleading, excuse me, is that in the trailer, you know, there's a scene where Harry Osborn is talking to his father and he is on his deathbed. He says, "What about Peter?" And then he says. 
not everyone has a happy ending. Yeah. Well, first of all, that scene doesn't make sense because as we begin with Spider-Man Two, it uh, it shows that Harry Harry Osborn's dad, Norman, is dying. He's on his deathbed, and up until that point, we didn't even see Harry Osborn even interact with Peter. Yeah, like he hadn't seen him in ten years, and then after his father dies in the film. He sees Peter again after his father dies. Uh, I do gotta say that's another issue I have. Um, they poorly, and they do not describe, but they poorly, poorly, poorly have uh, the motivation of how and Harry and Peter are friends. How they, they are, know each other. They are because they're just like, hey, boom, you knew each other. That's for what I'm saying. Years. They they, they don't, don't even know that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. They it's don't even. There's cool. no. I mean, there's build up, but there's like that's there's one scene where they're walking and they're like on the beach or something. And they're saying, oh, hey, we haven't seen you in like almost 10 years. We're best yes. friends again. It's like, that's the only scene we see them interact that's yeah. actually, you know, them together. Because yeah. the next scene is where, because uh, the whole issue is Harry Osborn is, he develops this, uh, what is it, some kind of weird, like, it's uh, like a chip it's like a, It's like a, oh, the disease he's getting. Yeah, because he, oh, right. he has like this chip that he puts in. First of all, before we talk about that, I do got to another rant I got to bring up is how they poorly use Norman Osborn. They do. For such a big guy who created Oscorp, I expect it more than him croaking in five minutes of the movie. Yeah. I mean, he's on his deathbed, boom, he dies. Yeah. That's Norman Osborn. That's what we got out of Norman. Yeah, because... The guy who killed the Parkers family, mm -hmm. and we only get a motivation of him laying in his bed, and he dies. Well, like he said, Harry's deforming the disease. He'll tell you about that. Yeah. This is another thing that I'm having a problem with because in the film, uh, Harry, because in the trailers they make you think that Norman Osborn is either going to probably somehow show up at the end or maybe he kind of starts out as, as Green Goblin at first yes. because as this this is not even close to what's showing in the trailers. Because the trailers, I was thinking, okay, maybe maybe Harry comes to the end or something. Maybe he comes to the end and he takes over his father. Because I thought they were going to pull up Spider-Man 1 and just have his father be the Green Goblin. No. What they do is... He dies of this disease, which apparently makes like his fingers kind of like long or something. Uh, it's kind of like a flesh eating disease. Yeah, it's, it's like a, something they call I don't remember the name, but it ended with the plasia or something. Yeah, it's pretty much their organs and their scans and their sort their orifices. Everything is all rotten. Pretty right. much, because this is also a big thing that yeah. we'll get to later. But pretty much, it's the equivalent of him actually becoming a goblin. Yeah. You know, he's actually becoming like a green goblin, kind of. But, uh, and also, after that happens, Harry has, like, this weird serum or something, or some kind of weird chip that he puts on his neck, and later on in the film, he's like, I need, I need, he needs to have Spider-Man's blood in order to survive this. Well, the only scene they have with him and Peter is a scene where Peter is talking to him and saying, I need Spider-Man's blood. Or else Which, die. again, is another problem right here, where he's not, he's, he's making it sound like he needs a little blood, but... He's acting like he also has to kill Spider-Man. Yeah. It's like, how much blood do you not you need? You're not explaining, do you need a drop to make him change, or do you need all his blood? Why do you need all That's his blood? That's what I'm saying. So it, it's another poor I movie. mean, it really doesn't make sense either, yeah. because it's like, well, first of all, why? Because the whole thing about his dad having those spiders, wouldn't it have been like, how do you know if it's that same spider? Because there could have been other spiders that would have had that same blood. Yeah. It couldn't have been just Spider Man's blood. And another problem, uh, when Richard where the Oscorp does backstab uh his father, uh Richard Parker. Yeah. And they use the venom from the spiders to go kill him. Yeah. But all right, so how do all right, if that's the same spider that that are that bit Peter Parker and turned him into Spider Man, how is that same venom changing That's no, what I they don't explain why why does uh Harry turn Green Goblin when he had the same venom. That's what I'm saying. I yeah, don't... why did he not turn into Spider-Man? So they don't explain it. By the way, he turns into Green Goblin. This movie does due to uh, the same venom form that is used on Peter Parker when he got bit by a spider. Mm -hmm. They took the venom out of the spiders before they killed him. Later in the movie, Harry injects himself with the same venom, but he doesn't become Spider. He becomes Green Goblin. Green Goblin. Because it's a yeah. different type of, like, it's a different kind of serum, basically. Yeah. It uh, might have mixed something up. Yeah, they don't explain. They don't explain it. shit. That's why I I have a problem with this movie. Like you said, they just do not no. explain nothing. We do not know nothing. This movie is just uh thrown in patches, just thrown out there, and yeah. they want you to find puzzles, this, but they're not coming together. They're and not. I know a lot of people out there, and even myself, don't like yeah. Spider-Man Three. And after talking with him for several hours in this film, 
I'm sorry, but even though I hate that film, yeah. that movie had a better fucking story arc than this movie okay. is. I'll go admit, this movie, to me, in my opinion, is worse than Spider-Man 3. Because at yeah. least Spider-Man 3, it's the last, the trilogy, you know, it's still trying to put, it's trying to have an epic finale. Yes, I understand they crammed too much in there along with the villains, the shitty supply with the with the romance, so that, but... The scene, the actual story arc with Harry Osborn actually made sense because he's wanting revenge. You know, yeah. they had two movies to build that up. Mm-hmm. This one, uh, no, they don't fucking do that at all. Uh, if you're going to see the film, uh, w- warning, you're going to be sitting there about an hour, 20, hour, 30 before it, something, one thing happens, the first thing, epic, where there's actually action. Now, the, 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 action. now don't get me wrong, there is action in this film. Yeah. But all the scenes, you know, where they're throwing like Electro and uh, Green Goblin and shit like that. That hardly ever comes in until like maybe 45 minutes at least. The Green Goblin doesn't come till the end. No. Sadly, uh, spoiler alert, he comes at the end. And I will say one thing. Green Goblin look, I will give an A+. Plus. That was the best Green Goblin look they, ever, they could possibly do and I loved it. They, it was a wasted opportunity. It was. Wasted. It was. Wasted. Now, and I, I'm with you on this too. I... I do like the look better than the first one because yes. even though the first one is still a good movie, I still love the film. I can still admit that is a cheesy costume. It looked like a fucking Power Ranger. It did, it did. And that's why I'm I'm glad they went more in the body, turned yeah. into a goblin. Yeah. And that look was cool. It was. it was awesome. But you're gonna feel so sad because they're only gonna use the movie. They're gonna use that look for only five minutes. Mm-hmm. You get five minutes of Green Goblin. When he is actually uh and we we should all agree on this. Green Goblin should be up there with Venom and Carnage. We all know those three are his epic. Those are his Joker. Yep. Of his, vi- it's basically, of his villains. But you're going to give Green Goblin five minutes? Five minutes? Hell. Fuck Let alone him. you gave Norman nothing. You gave him a bye-bye to his son. That was it. Fuck. Even Spider-Man 3. You know what? Venom had even more. Had yes. ten minutes. You know, Venom. He had more screen time. Venom did have more. Way more screen time than uh, Green Goblin. That's how bad this is. This is Electro's movie. Mm-hmm. And let me talk about Electro. Oh yeah, you're. you're oh, oh, I, oh right. Well, first, for let's, one more thing. One more thing about. Let's just, the, let's just start with. All right. Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. Green Goblin. Well, one thing about Green Goblin is I also do like how the glider. It looks kind of like it's it's kind of different from the original glider because remember the original glider it looked like it had like, cut in two. Yeah. Now. yeah. I got. I do like the glider. I yeah. do like that. I mean, everything was right about Green Goblin. It's just, why was he not the main villain yeah. storyline? Why yeah. does he only get the very ending credits? Boom, he goes to jail. He's in prison. He's yeah. done. It's over. Uh, I'm going to let him talk about uh, Electro because he was uh, really yeah. pissed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me say, for my, the first thing I got to get off my chest first, before I start ranting on this, uh, the 3D, the visual is beautiful. It is. Electro is beautiful, what he can do. The, I mean, if you go see it, I recommend it seen on theater. Matt because it, that's what it is. It, it's it's high quality. You want to see something that good in a big theater, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, now let's get to problems. My biggest problem is the motive. Yeah, the motive. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna have me believe that the main villain is mo- only motive is fame. That's it. That's no. the, that's why. Oh, because the guy that plays him is named Max. Uh, what the- what Don't know his name? last name, but his name is Max, and we know who plays. He's played by Jamie Fox. Jamie Fox. Um, the motive is Jamie Fox is this loser. No one cares about him. They push him around. He's a dork. He's a geek. Yeah. Uh, basically, this is it. This is the motive. Uh, Spider Man keeps getting over TV. He's famous. Everybody knows his name. Yeah. It's all about the name. He gets mad when you don't know his name is Max. Mm-hmm. He gets mad because people know Spider Man's name. Yeah. So that's that. There you go, people. That's the and, motive. That's and it. Here, that's and it. here's the biggest thing that this is this is all about. Yeah. Be, because either, and I'm not trying to offend anybody, but they did kind of have some weird overtones with the whole fucking electro shit. Because the whole purpose is that when he's his regular civilian, Max, he gets saved by Spider Man one day, and he's coming. Spider Man is swinging, trying to catch the guys that. Again, this is the guy who's going to be Rhino who he's catching. He's on the way to go stop those guys. And at the way, uh, something is about to fall down, and, and uh, he saves Max from being killed. Yeah. And later on in the film, after Jamie Foxx becomes Electro, he wants yeah. to pretty much become have the same thing that he has. Yeah. And also, 
And then, let, like alone, saying, let alone what finally ticks Electro off is Spider-Man couldn't remember his name. Right. That's what started it all. You you can't make a movie that kind of motivation, especially like Electro. No, here's I'm the not. biggest thing that I'm fucking pissed. Well, I wasn't pissed at it, but like, I was really upset about. It's basically, he was like, because there's a later scene in where Electro's like hanging up in like this weird electrical center. And he, Harry comes to save him. He's like, I need you, Max. And then he goes, oh, you need me? Oh, okay. Now I'm the main bad guy. That's not no. a motivation. Uh, that just, oh, my God, it just irritates me. No, that movie, no. Because this is a cliched fucking stock villain. You know why? We've seen this in Iron Man 3. Yes. We've seen this in The Incredibles. Incredible. We've seen this in, well, okay, Grand, they did show it in, in Batman 1 with Jack Nelson. He did, it was like that too, but he actually had a motive. He did have the a motive. The reason why Batman, uh, the, the original 89 version worked was because that character, yes, I know it's separate from the comics, but as a film, that was a good fucking twist that it was a Joker killing Batman's Batman's uh, or Bruce Wayne's parents. That's that was saying. a good twist. You can't make any movie of such epic like Spider Man, Batman. Um, you cannot make movies where the villain is motive is because you can't remember their fucking name. Let alone I just, can't. Oh, you don't know my name is Max. I'm pissed. Yeah. That was what Letro's problem. That's was. what I'm saying. He couldn't remember my name. All I had to do is remember, write it down. His name is Max, and I'm sure Electro would have went home. That was my indication of what he's telling me. All I gotta do is remember his name, and he's cool. You people gotta tell me you ain't buying this as the best Spider-Man ever made. Because I was actually disappointed how many people. I'm not trying to like you know you know it's your opinion. We live in a free country, but as come on, people, that is not the best motive and the best Spider-Man. I can't believe I'm actually reading all these people like I thought that was a perfect motive. No, really? Oh, I don't know your name. So that gives you a motive to destroy the city and kill everybody. Yeah, that and, yeah, and that I, was look, it. That was the motive. That's look, it. if you want a good Spider-Man film, that's okay. Grant, I know I'm talking more about the original series, but to be fair, at least Spider-Man Two, they actually had. Okay, of course, I know this is Doc Ock. Doc Ock. Doc Ock was still a villain, yeah. even though he kind of turned good at the end. He still had a better motivation than yes. fucking Electro. Uh, I actually talked it over with him. I think that uh, the motive of Electro was the worst motive of any villain in any movie in ever in, in cinema history. It was that bad because uh, that that the other motives they have different ways of doing things. But I, I'm sorry, his na the Electro's name is Max, and I can't remember his name, so he's gonna come and kill. Me. That yeah. was the motive. And yes, Electro is big. Yeah, okay. And we've all wanted to see him. The problem with this film, basically, I'm going to have to say, is um, because how we're living in a time where 3D and visual look is what matters, mm -hmm. the movie did look beautiful. The it movie, did. The Electro did. did. But that's why they picked Electro, is for visuals. They focused on so much with the visuals that they forgot they were making a fucking story. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's similar to a lot of films when you have like style over substance, where a movie looks great, but on the inside... It, it's the kind of reaction I have when I watch that uh, that Zack Snyder movie called You ever seen Sucker Punch? The one where it's about. Oh play. no, I've seen. Uh, I gotta go back and watch. Yeah, it. I've seen like the beginning of it. I yeah, it, it's it's like one of those. The movie looks great. It looks. It has. Okay, I, I don't mean to sound like that's a guy from Wanted, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't mean to sound vulgar, but it's the equivalent of like having a uh, seeing a, a a very gorgeous hooker. And she's got like a very bad fucking like STD or something. Is it bad that I've seen better motivations in pornos than I did with uh, Maze of Spider Man 2? Because I have. I will admit, I've actually seen better storylines than fucking Maze of Spider Man 2. Yeah. I've seen better pornos have better motivation than fucking Lecho Man's introduction. Yeah, <laughs> plus, oh, that's no. Let alone, not to cut you off one more time. All right, you think Electro, you think in your mind, like, he must be very fucking powerful to kill. Yeah. Because he, he does do invisible. He goes through circuits. Boom, you can't see him half the time. Uh, For killing a villain, that was pretty fucking quick. It was. And he died. It was just like, hey, Gwen goes, hey, do this. Okay. Boom. Also, he's, that's, he's dead. That's a fucking cop bar right there. I don't like how our superheroes get fucking have to get uh 
advice from other characters. That to me, that to me shows that that's not even a good fucking hero. Yeah. That to me is just lazy writing. Uh, not to mention if you go back and I actually watched the first Amazing Spider-Man last night, I noticed how when he fought the Green Lizard, that he actually got injured. Like, yeah. He was bleeding all over the place. He was he was walking like his leg was broke. Yeah. And I noticed how Electro was giving him like fatal voltage through him and it didn't even face him. No. He didn't die. No, because like when okay. you're not gonna tell me all that electricity goes through Peter Parker and he didn't bro. No, he does electricity. He don't even get injured. It like he's like, oh man, I'm hurt. Oh okay, I'm back. Yeah, that to me you know, because if you're gonna get damaged if you're gonna get hurt by a villain like that, you need to at least fucking show it. Because you can't tell me this is another thing this is another thing they didn't show with like with uh with when they were fighting Green Goblin. You know, when he's fighting Green Goblin he still doesn't feel fucking pain. Oh, not to mention he whoops Green Goblin in uh, after about two minutes. In two minutes, an epic whooping. We'll get to that later. Cause and I got a problem with that because that's supposed to be one of the villains. He gets pretty damaged. I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Green Goblin. Like I said, well, I think of Spider Man's epic monsters. You know, the be villains that can probably stomp his ass. I think of Green Goblin starting the shit, and then finally getting to Venom and Carnage being another yeah. one of his epic battles. So you're gonna so the movie basically is gonna leave out all three of them guys. Yeah, it's like it's like, like you're you're making villains that I don't care about more powerful than the ones that need to be powerful. That's what I'm saying because why? Because we've seen movies where people get damaged. For look, I know I'm talking about other films that are besides this, but I'm just saying in context wise, you know, how you have other films where superheroes get really brutalized and they have to fight. They're like the underdog. They have to come back and do a do like a rematch. The only times I've seen that really happen, honestly, was with like Iron Man three and Dark Knight Rises when those two those two characters they get brutalized by these fucking powerful yeah. villains and they had to come back for an epic finale. Yeah, I don't get no indication that it's getting harder for Peter Parker. Like they say in the previews, he finally meets his epic battle. Yeah. On that, the bottom. He whoops both villains flat out first fight. That's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. like it's like what the fuck, man? You, you're, yeah. you're. That's another thing. I don't like how these trailers are promoting this film. They're promoting Very, it like it's yeah. supposed to be like it's supposed to be like the Dark Knight of the fucking series. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting it's bad. supposed to, it's supposed yeah. to be shit's supposed to be real. You know. All right. Here's yeah. where I got. And hey, we're we're gonna be on this. We're, we're gonna talk about the fucking romances film because oh. now here's one thing I will say. I do buy Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone together with their chemistry. Yes, I do. But I do. it would have worked as a different movie. You okay. cannot have a romance like that and then call it a Spider-Man. There's film. a difference than having some romance in it. Like you know, you you introduce like a bunch of things in the action film. There's no problem with romance. But when you make the movie an hour and a half from romance and then what an hour of talking and only thirty minute action, there's a problem. There's yeah. an issue, especially with a superhero movie like Spider-Man. Yeah. You know, um, I'm, I'm sure that everybody was getting, oh, whenever we kept hearing Gwen break up with Peter, Peter break up with Gwen. Yeah. Gwen breaks up with Peter, Peter breaks up with Gwen. That's, we get, they broke up 12 times in the movie. I'm like, okay, guys, I'm really that, sick and tired of this. Um, and also, what really yeah. pissed me off was the weird flashes they had with Dennis Larry coming from the first one. Okay. What the fuck was All that right. about? All right, guys. For another spoiler. Man, they try to pull a Halloween two with this movie. They did. Where we where we see Dennis Leary and he don't even talk once, but the rest of the movie's just like standing there. And where they're pulling a Halloween two where Peter sees Dennis Leary in the middle of New York in the crowds walking past him. About what, every ten minutes of the film? Yeah, it's like they pull a Rob Zombie. They Halloween pull a Rob too. Zombie Halloween two. Where the mother talks, you know, is talking Halloween, mm -hmm. you know, to Michael Myers. Uh, they do that with, uh, they're now starting to do it with Spider-Man, where Dennis Leary is practically giving Spider-Man points, or, you know, how to do things, but practically, but that's not what it's supposed to be about. No. You don't make a superhero where a dead man is giving you points. Okay, look, I understand I they did that it. with the original, because Ben Parker did that or in the original trilogy. You know, yeah. he had, like, dreams where he was dreaming of his Uncle Ben. And he was okay, having, they can do that. Yeah, they can have dreams, but this is him like just standing this, there. He's just standing like, there, like with no, no motivation. Why? Look, I understand yeah. the whole purpose is that he's trying to. Because in the end of the first movie, remember he dies. Says, says, you just you have to leave her go. You yeah. need to let her go. Okay, I can. I, that's enough flashback we could have got. 
I'm not going to see every 10 minutes Daniel Slayer is standing over here and then he disappears. And then Peter Parker turns around at lunch and he looks over at this other diner and there's Dennis Leary again standing there. And that's the whole movie he does that. Yeah. He disappears, appears, disappears, and, appears. And also, it doesn't With even no make, motivation. Mm, no, no there, motivation. there, it doesn't even make sense too because, yeah. well, okay, look. I understand the whole point is to show that it's supposed to motivate Peter Parker. You know, he's yeah. supposed to lay Gwen. But they do this constantly in the film. Oh, whenever. They're, when they're always breaking up, get back together, break up. I'm just, I'm fucking tired of it. When they even, when they even split up and broke up, he fucking still was appearing. He appeared, I was surprised he didn't appear out of the fucking credits. You know, did it, did it, did it, did it, and then his face, and then did it, did it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, That's, what the fuck? Like, fucking kept appearing. I was like, what, you're going to bring him back to life? We're gonna see some reanimator shit. Yeah, you know, I that was pointless mm -mm. to have him in. All right, the next thing, and here's another problem. This is another sport. Um, and oh, some of you might ha have a different opinions of this because it is for kids too. Uh, let's talk about spoiler. Gwen dies. Yes, that to me was very poorly executed. Because look, yes. for those of you who are familiar with the comics, there's if you've read the comic books, you know that. The Green Goblin was the one who killed Gwen Stacy in the comic books because it was Peter's first love. Yes. In the comic books, it, it, it seems like they had a better death because, if I remember correctly, there's a scene in the comic books. I mean, I haven't read, but I, I'm just going from other sources that Gwen gets killed by like a bomb when the, mm -hmm. the, the Green Goblin throws like a pumpkin bomb at her and she blows up. All right. Uh, all right. Let's go back. Let's see. Let's, let, let, let's tell you what happens. All right. Uh, Green Goblin and. Uh, you know, Spider-Man, uh, they're fighting an epic two-minute fight. On a clock tower. Finally, we get to see this at the fucking end of the movie, but their little epic pussy two-minute fight. Uh, he's pretty much whoop, you know, Green Goblin, but mm -hmm. something, I forgot how Green Goblin does it, but, uh, in the middle of the movie, Spider-Man's little ch -ch 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 is fucked up by Electro Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he's pretty much on his last straw where he only has one more of his little, you know, web thing yeah. before he can't use no more. Uh, they do, uh, Green Goblin doesn't really, I don't know if he really did or didn't, it's kind of hard, but, uh, drop, makes him drop Gwen. It does. And, alright, Gwen falls all the way to, almost the end, almost to the ground, but Spider-Man saves her. He saves her, but here's the issue. As she's dangling, somehow she goes, bumps her head. Boom. She's dead. And to me, right. that, that is just, fucking at, that little bump no. killed her. Oh, and I know this is for a kid movie. This is for a kid movie. I understand that. But uh, that little drop of blood, it just goes, Neep. Yeah. And you're telling me she died. I'm sorry, but I've seen head injuries, and the way she bumped her head was either going to be a knockout or whiplash. Yeah. Oh, man, my neck hurts. I mean, you could argue that she maybe, like, her back kind of split, kind of, because, like, when she hit her head, like, she was tilting her whole body. But the way that it's edited, it doesn't look like that, because nah. it looks like she just knocks her head back on the floor. I'm not buying the look of her scene. I would have bought more of seeing her disappear in the distance as she's falling to her death. Where yeah. Spider-Man can't do anything about it. That's what I'm saying. Disappear into the, the distance, uh, and then she's gone. Yeah. I would have bought that because you can't show blood because it's what you want to promote. PG-13. You want to promote it where... Let All families. Seat. Yeah. Uh, so that could have been PG-13 qualified. Uh, another thing would have been better is we could have seen a distant explosion of Green Goblin. Cut away. Yeah, 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 cut, cut away. away. Like, it, I would have bought that more than they want you to see her death. But the death was so poorly done because she just goes bump her head and we're expecting that she had some magic traumatic injury. Yeah. She died. And then there, at the end, one little drop of blood goes, eat. Yeah. To me, I didn't even get a cut in the back of her head. I mean, it's not the worst yeah. death that I've seen because I've seen worse. Ugh, but that is, know. as far as comic films, yeah, that was very lazy. For a movie that's supposed to be good and expected to be A+, plus, yeah. every movie, that was a shitty point. Now, I know we've gone on to about 34 minutes on talking about all the shit that we've had problems with, but we'll get into some good things we liked about it. Because there are some good things here and there. Okay, I did like Andrew Garfield in this movie. Yeah. I know you didn't like him now since he's doing the fucking joke shit, but I do like how he, in the comic books, that's how he oh, is. Can we uh, can we uh, specify that real quick on the, on the hate part? Uh, enough of the fucking jokes. 
in these movies. We've seen too much. Dude, can True. we do? We okay. gotta agree to that tonally, we're seeing... Tonally, it does not fit in context because yeah. you cannot have... Because the way they edit this these movie, this movie is because it's very bloated. It's very long, and they put a lot of scenes that don't... that It's just all over the place where yeah. you have a scene where Peter is talking to... Or, I'm sorry, he's, he's like... Uh, on his way to go fight Rhino. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, it's the part where he's at the truck. He's like, yeah. I, I understand that's his shtick in the comics. And I'm, I'm fine with that. But they kind of overdo it too much yes. because you would have even serious moments where he's telling a fucking joke or somebody else telling a joke. Just, I, I just have a sense. hard time a villain just sitting there while Spider-Man pretty much tells him in this movie, pretty much does this. He goes, stop. And then he starts telling people knock knock jokes and shit like that. I'm not gonna fucking buy that kind of like shit. Like I said, I know comic book yeah. fans they they would get more out of this because that's how he is in the comics. Yeah, I just it's just, but for you, I know it's it's not you're not used to it. Yeah, I'm just I don't I'm not into it. I mean, I'm not used to it either because the first movie I didn't realize they were gonna do that shit because in the first movie he does use that like the beginning. He's like he's like right. oh no knives are not are my biggest weakness. You know. Well, he, the move the first one didn't overdo it either. Right. When I watched the first one, I noticed they didn't overdo it. It still came out a good movie. Uh, now this one, they really overdo it. I mean, there's like a joke in every scene where he's like stopping. Like, I don't believe he's gonna be able to stop time where everybody shuts up while he tells a joke. He I'm does really, have the yeah. end when he's fighting Ryan because yes. that little boy steps in and he's dressed like Spider Man, and then he says, "I saved him for you," and then he's just talking shit to him again. And it's just like, look, I know Spider Man's supposed to be a badass, but you can kind of you don't have to overdo it like that. Yeah, it was overdone. And it wasn't even that funny. It was. I, I didn't think was it was funny. that funny. It wasn't funny. Uh, you know, I thought the the jokes they had in the first movie were funnier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He didn't really say anything that made any sense. But to be fair, I will like I said as far as as far as Spider Man as the character, Andrew Garfield his performance was good. Yeah. It's just he that was. his character yeah. was very underrun because of all the shit they gave him, the lines that they gave uh, him. I'm not trying to bash uh, James Franco because I do like James Franco. I do too. Uh, and I did like him in the original Spider Man. But I really. Dane. Buying Dane. Dane. As, uh, as Harry. Harry. Yeah. Hick slash Green Goblin. Yeah. The look of Green Goblin was A. Plus. Uh, Dane as as Harry is an A. He is. I, I, I really. Uh, he buying he him. really has some really intense moments. And too. Believe it or not, I actually, he, I actually had problems with him being. Because I. I didn't know because he's not a well-known actor, so I didn't know is he gonna be good. Well, because remember he's the guy from he was from yeah, Chronicles, Chronicles. So seeing that's from, why seeing from Chronicles, I can actually see it now because he has that intensity. Yeah. He carries a lot of that emotion to him. I can see him being definitely Green Goblin, that, but I had a problem with is he gonna be a good Harry? Yeah, Harry he did fine with. Yeah. It's just the Green I, Goblin. With, now when I watched Chronicles uh, when it came out, I knew he would be good as. Green Goblin, because yeah. he is playing like Green Goblin in that movie. Yeah, he where is. he's kind of gliding in the air. Yeah, it's pretty much like that was his inspiration for Green Goblin, you yes. know. And I, I like Chronicle a lot. That's one of those. Okay, we're not going to talk about that, but like yeah. it's a good movie. Yeah. But I still buy his performance as Harry because even though I like James Franco as Harry, I feel like he had more of a better. I think that he had more charisma, so to speak. He yeah. had more of that. He looked more scarier. He did. Like he did because yeah. I, I like James Franco, but he kind of hammed it up. He a brought bit too a much. creepy feeling, a little chillsier back. To yeah. Harry. And since Harry is going to become bad, I want that feeling. I want that feeling in my spine, not trying to be pretty boy, rich boy, and then you know, I feel I feel like he should be more. He's kind of. Kind of evil. Yeah, like he's he was kind of evil when he was Harry. He yeah, was dirty in a way. He was kind of scary. Yeah, because like he like he was you know talking shit to his uh his board members like yeah you can call me by Mister Osborne you don't call me Harry yeah. you know he's just really he he doesn't have that he you need to check it out you'll understand it's it's a lot easier to see than it is to tell what he yeah uh, you'll get a good I think you'll have a positive yeah. view. And I, like I said, as far as performances, I did enjoy Andrew Garfield. I also did like Emma Stone's performance. Yeah. Even though their their romance is, is, is really completely out of place, for what they had together, I thought their on-screen chemistry was fine. Yeah. Even when I'm bashing Electro, because he was poorly, he should have never been in the movie. He should have been focused on Green Goblin more uh, and all that stuff. But even bashing, I still thought Jamie Foxx still did that. Because yeah. it was not his character. No, it wasn't. That was not his role. And plus, the lines that they gave him to fucking say are not yes. something you would expect out of a character like that. Yeah. He's like, 
You know what it kind of reminds me of, now that I think about it? I know you haven't seen this movie in a while. It was kind of reminding me of fucking, uh, what was it? Uh, Nuclear Man from fucking Superman 4. He's like, I want to have fun. That's what he was talking like. He kind of reminded me of Nuclear Man. The only thing Electro did right in this film... The voice. Is the voice. Now, here's another irritation problem I do have with Electro. Mm. Every time Electro appears in this movie, you hear music in the background. It's like the same song, like somebody's carrying a fucking... Uh, bo- a boombox with them and like, it's, hey, it's, it's like electro, a, click, play. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's like that, yeah. what's it called? That's uh, that music that that's, it's like di- distort or, I'm trying to think. Uh, I got to think of it for a second, but yeah, you're right. That weird music that plays, it's like always like, like, and since we're trying to watch this movie and so far the movie is like real, like film real, how is this music playing every time electro comes? The same song. It's like somebody's really carrying a, de- a boombox with them, and they're putting that song on yeah. every time he appears. Like he's got his own anthem. And yeah. also, um, that was a, all right. I could buy it one or two times when you're starting an epic battle where you do play good sound effects music, but not when hey he's walking down the street. There's that song. If, hey, he's going grocery shopping. There's that song again. Hey, let's go to work. There's that song again. That's what I'm saying. He like, also he, had. It comes on every time. You also had music. Well, speaking of music, we also had music that feels out of place. Like, remember that scene when he's first seen himself as Electro? That he's supposed to be, like, in a very dark, serious moment? Oh, I did. that really shitty... You had that really shit... That that, 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 that triumph music. Like Super Mario. Yeah, like... like, music while they're fighting instead of that dark... Yeah, I'm like, what the... Music. That's out of place. that was. Yeah, it was. This (laughs) movie has, like, a weird tone shift. It it doesn't know what it's trying to be. You might as well put country music when they're fighting. Yeah. Because it was really... The music did not match the darkness of it. Yeah, no. Yeah. And also, too... uh, no, what what was that. your what was your thoughts about how they uh they did the uh the backstory for uh uh oh I was gonna bring this up when I told him like because uh, there's a character in the film too that and again I know we said this before but there's another character who's gonna set up in a future movie too Felicia Hardy because mm-hmm. apparently um Harry Osborne he's has his, he's he's now head of Oscar he hires his own secretary named Felicia. Mm-hmm. Comic book fans out there may remember that in the comic books, that's Felicia Hardy. She's Black Cat. Uh, Black Cat is is the equivalent of pretty much Marvel's uh, Catwoman of DC. Yes. You know, she she kind of has like the same motivation as Catwoman. But I think what they're gonna do is they're probably gonna set her up for like a future movie. Uh, they do. And another spoiler, even though he ain't wearing the suit, uh, Doc we Ock's do get to see Doc Ock. Doc Ock's we do it. get to see Doc Ock before he actually has the tentacle. So there are some good little Easter yeah. eggs that they have in there yes. that are cool. That's but cool. I'll give them that. But that was more for like fan service because only comic book fans would pick that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you kind of picked up Doc Ock, but I'm saying like those little things like Felicia Hardy, that's usually yeah. stuff that comic book fans would know. Well, I, you know, I have no problem with the little pieces like that, but still the, mo- the movie overall is all over the place. It is. Nothing's but, making sense. It's like you're throwing past and mixed with present. Present to the past. It's I like, mean, it's like this is thrown over here, this is thrown over here. It, People who know like it's how to make movies even agree that this movie was in so many pieces like damn that should have been over this side you know, it, this it's it's very movie. poorly edited it is it is for yeah. they because the director mark webb i understand that he's known for music videos in the past before he did the first spider-man yeah. but he doesn't know how to craft like scenes because scenes would cut away to like other se- stuff that has like like that weird scene remember when he's in his bedroom just listening to music and he has that music go, for you, where he's looking up information that has nothing to do with the rest of the story. Yeah. Well, I mean, it has to do with it, but it's like, it's a pointless scene where he's listening to music, just find information, and they have that really shitty pop music playing. That's what I'm saying. It's like they're mixing. The music does not match this type of movie. Like, the sound effects. Uh, all right, maybe there's one song that matches one villain, but, you know, but which is the uh, the uh, sound effects they actually use yeah. every time they see the, the Electro, but the, the music, they do have a lot of, tr- like, that, that freaking pop mixing with a dark scene. Like, like back, they're pretty much playing a pop scene when fucking Gwen dies. You don't play, hey, Backstreet's back, all right? <laughs> well, like, I mean, the, the, it was just the way I mean, the that's not what they, they don't use that gay song. But <laughs> I'm just saying, like, music that in that yeah. kind of category is playing on scenes like where someone's dying or something. It's like, you don't... No, no, you don't. It does not make no sense. I mean, come on now. Now, look, I don't mind the score. It's just the score itself, like the actual, you know, instrumental music, it's just very kind of forgettable. Yeah. You know, it's nothing special. Now, one thing I will admit, though, is 
that scene where they are in the power plant when he's fighting Electro, that I'll admit makes the movie. That it does. Is one of my favorite action parts. It is my favorite action part, and it was all like I trailers. said, that people, this is a, a type of movie that you you you're gonna see in like 3D or in theaters or IMAX, whatever your choice is. This is the type of movie that's gonna do so well because the visuals are so beautiful. But if you're somebody that owns a crappy TV, it's going to look boring to you because you're not going to get no excitement. Right, because it's certain things where if you know that a movie's filmed in 3D right, yeah. you want to see on the big screen. Because yeah. unless you have a 3D TV, you're not really going to have to see much of it. This is a problem with what they did with Spider-Man 2. Uh, the fact that they focus pretty much 80% on visual, knowing that there's people that still own big TVs, little TVs, the old school black and white TVs. Yeah. And they're going to watch these films. And because that the, this movie is only the only good thing about this movie really is visual. There ain't no good plot or nothing. Uh, those people who never get to get lucky and see in theaters. They're gonna be really bored with that. Oh yeah, because be it's focused on visual. Because you know when you watch it off of an old school fat ass yeah. TV, you know that that th those visuals are gonna be pointless. In those That's what I'm saying. There, yeah. there's a difference. Look. I understand a lot of films do that too. It's not just a film. There's, there's to be fair, there's a lot of movies do that where it's always visuals over story. Three Hundred does that, I know. Uh, so does you know a lot of Zack Snyder's films. But those movies at least carry things that were still important with the story. And you still like you, you know the visuals beautiful, but you're still getting into the story. You're still getting the story because there's a difference between a movie that can still be good visually and a movie that's good for both. Because not a lot of directors carry you know both. Like because there's some directors who are only good at like good visual effects and like for for example you know you have like directors like michael bay yeah he, he makes movies that are visually good looking yes. but he has poems called the stories especially when it's on properties that, that are like you could you could say that it felt this movie even though yeah he doesn't have nothing to do with it but spider-man 2 has a uh michael bay feel to it with the, the electric just without all the weird yeah. undertone he doesn't yeah. use a just about the weird and undertones. nothing to do with aliens thank god yeah. Well, no, but like, yeah. there's no like racially overtones in because yeah. he does a lot of his films. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like the looks, it looks beautiful. Um, uh, now you got some of you have a benefit for this movie still would be the ones who own big screen TVs, 3D TVs. Yeah, you'll still, I'd you, say, you still do. You'll still be lucky because the movie is beautiful. It was yeah. fun. I, would enjoy, I you know what? I still glad I went and seen it in 3D because at least I got something I liked out of it. The visual. I mean, imagine if I would have watched that at home. Yeah. I would have really threw that fucker away because I wouldn't got the visual to it. Well, to be fair, I didn't even know I got a good TV. I just don't got movie. So to be fair, too, we also had the audience. The audience had more of a kick out than we did because the audience, they see, well, with the exception of a couple, most of the audience, they were kind of going along with the film. They there was just like a few that were like, oh fuck this, they, they fucked up Green Goblin, just like you like you were saying. Yeah. You know, but there most of the audience that were we because it was pretty crowded. Uh, most yeah. of the people were kind of we're we're joining it for what it was. They're joining for what it was, and a lot of people. And I'm not trying to like act like I know everything and people don't, but a lot of movies, it's, it, I think it's fair to say that there, even though there's people that, that are out there, many of these people, they do watch movies every week. There's yeah. people that watch movies all the time, but there's also a lot of people that do like to watch movies and they don't know really know what they're looking for in movies. They just care about visual. Yeah. And I felt like a lot of people in the crowd were more visual because I kept seeing, because it was, it had some badass 3D and everybody it was did. like, whoa, you know, where it's yeah, kind of like screen and stuff. It was cool. It was fine. But, you know, they didn't care about the story. They cared about that part. Oh. I care about everything about a film when I see one and I fucking did not like the story. Now we gotta get to the ending because this is gonna be a big reveal when oh, it happens yeah. because this one what they're doing is and I know it's they've already gone out of the hey, can we say this before because this was technically before the uh, ending uh, can we talk about how Green Goblin suddenly knew what suit to put on yeah he was, that was just random I was like okay you, you know he's in this Green Goblin's turning into Green Goblin that's the sweet part but then he has all these choices that are opening up. All these doors are opening up to what he could wear. How did he know to pick the right suit? Exactly. Like, it doesn't explain. It doesn't. It would have been more legit that it would have just opened up in front of him. Or if he would have happened to land in the area where it's at and he looks up. Right. But it doesn't. It's pretty much he has a category to it. And, and, and look, and I know I'm going back to the first one. I'm just going to say, at least in the first movie, the, the original Raimi trilogy, at least in the first movie, it made sense how he would have that kind of that kind of suit because it was yeah. a suit that he was making. Yeah, you know, he was testing it out. Yeah, th there's no motivation to why he chose that suit in the second one. He had a he could have for for hell of it. 
he could have chosen the next one over, which is Vultures, I can see. Yeah. And, you know, why did he know to choose that right one? I mean, even though I'm glad he didn't choose the Vulture, because he's not Vulture, I'm just saying. You know what I was kind of hoping they were going to do? Like, honestly, yeah. I was kind of hoping, like, maybe there was going to be a twist to where uh, maybe Harry Osborn, mm-hmm. he becomes, like, a different villain. Like, maybe he becomes either a vulture or a I was a actually, hobgoblin. I, I was actually thought, hobgoblin. I was thinking, well, I thought, I knew, I, I already know they're leaving hobgoblin. I thought more likely they were going to have Norman and the Green Goblin. True. And they might have twisted it to where they made somehow Harry and uh, Dark Bob. That would have been cool. Yeah. I would have seen that. As Holy payback shit, that's for like killing a... my father. Yeah. But yeah, alone, they're not even trying to make Green Goblin. And I'm scared for the future films because I'm afraid that uh, they're also going to do the same without... Uh, because they still have any, they still are discussing about possibly not putting Venom or, or Carnage, Carnage in the series completely. It's then like, now you're gonna make another, you're gonna make other than the next one, which Doc Ock is a big villain. But who's gonna be the ultimate villain? In the fourth see, one? what I'm thinking, what they're gonna do is because in the, you, I'm sure pretty you know what's going on with the rumors going around that in the next movie they're gonna do a spinoff for Venom and for. Uh, uh, the Sinister Six because right. they set up the Sinister Six. No, so who's going to close out the, the, the series? Series. Honestly, I think they're probably going to go with like his biggest villain in the comics, which is probably like a big villain that's that no, that hasn't been on screen before. Because if they're going to go with Venom and, and Carnage, that should be at least like the third or fourth movie. That should be the fourth one, and I think that since we disrespected the beautiful look of Green Goblin, and only got five minutes, I thought it would be a better to fight his three top villains in the last film. Mm-hmm. Green Goblin, Venom, and Carnage would be a horrible battle. Oh, yeah. Be on. Oh, that man, would that'd be epic. It, it would be, be great. It would be like the final finale where he's actually hurt. He's actually like disabled. Yeah. Like disabled. He, he Tears arm like off someone, something. Yeah. Like he, he has to get like some kind of suit or something and, where he can take him down. And it would be rightfully to use all right, he gets his ass whooped because obviously them three together are going to tear him Oh, yeah. They're going to boom. They're going to fuck him up. You could introduce Black Cat to help him. You could. Or he's now saying, I need somebody to help me. I cannot do this alone. Maybe this they'll make a plot where the city joins together and help him. Now, tear them pa- now, I know if a lot of people have discussed what they're going to probably possibly do in the future. Because honestly, I'm hoping that maybe if he gets to that point, and I know this is all rights issues that they have. I know certain companies own these films. I know Sony owns this. And I know other companies own the other Marvel films. But I really wish that we could see Spider-Man get held by the Avengers. If they ever make a crossover with them together, he can get held like that. It'd probably be better because I, I'm not. Uh, they better not do this. If they do do a Green Goblin, Venom, and Carnage in the final film, they cannot make it look like Spider-Man easily defeated. No, this has got to be like Dark Knight Rises kind of type shit. I'm talking about where they just break him in half. Yeah, and he's just so done. And then we see the takeover over New York. And it's just destroyed. Yeah. To I mean, pretty much, I want to see, like, a Dark Knight Rise feel to it. I want to see an a vulnerable Armageddon. A yeah. vulnerable character. Because and, that's why yeah. I appreciated, like, other films that do that. Because it's hard to take a risk with that kind of superhero. Yeah. You have to, to test him, you know? Yeah. It's all about testing his vulnerability. Oh, yeah, which we're told that he was tested the second one. It didn't look like he was tested. I think he did more. In fact, it got easier than it Fuck. did with Lizard. Fuck. Lizard at least hurt him. Fuck, even in the... He tore... Electro up and and uh, Harry up and, and fuck even in minutes even in the first movie he got damaged pretty bad. Like, he did because I watched the first movie last night and it shows a scene where he he he's so hurt he can't even get to the Oscorp to get to the lizard man. Yeah, they had to help him and he's all sitting there like like and blood's see, pouring out and he's like well yeah. tell me why Electro and Green Goblin didn't do nothing to him he didn't have a scratch he's that's what I'm him. saying he's like, like damn this like I'm used to this shit. Yeah, he pulled. You know, he did. He pulled a fucking John McClane from Die Hard Five. Like he oh, did. I got, I got Chris out window, but I'm still all right. Um, yeah, where, uh, who, like, where he takes a million bolts by Electro and he didn't even kill him. Yeah. he's just like, ah. Oh. Yeah, that that was just lazy. It was. It was lazy. I'm supposed to get that little paragraph they put under the Spider-Man Two poster. His most epic battle yet. The battle starts now. Yeah. Oh, and that poster. Yeah. That's awesome, Miss Liam, because it shows on the poster. It shows. It's in, like, the Times Square. And, look, I know it's for marketing purposes. It's for promoting the film more. But I hate like, when they I don't like when you put three villains in a poster that don't even have the same scene. Yeah, they don't even... No, nobody has the same scene. You have a sp- little tiny of Harry and Electro. Electro. But they don't fight together. 
No. They do not fight. Don't expect they're all like, bam, 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 bam. Back not back. even Rhino. Rhino has no chemistry. It pretty much. Anybody. It pretty There's much. No screen time with anybody. It's just like, boom, Spider-Man finally gets rid of Electro. Boom, he gets rid of Harry. Boom, he gets rid of, in the credits, Rhino. Yeah. It's like, one, two, three, knocks him out. And in now, hits. oh, like, in... And uh, I'm sure probably some of you have seen this. Uh, did you get that? When were we seeing that weird ending credit scene where it looked like they were kind of crossed over X Men? I was like, Oh yeah, that was just random. This would be more of you talking about this because okay, I'm, well, I'm not big. Well, on let that. me let me say let me play this. Yeah, there's a scene during the credits which I know people have probably seen by YouTube by now, but there's a scene in the, in, during the middle of the credits where it shows pretty much a teaser trailer for X Men: Days of Future Past. Now this I'm looking forward to, but at the same time. I don't know why they put that in there, but then again, I look at it now. I went online and, I, and it said that supposedly they, uh, the guy who Mark Webb, he had a contract deal. He was supposed to drag X Men: Days of Future Past, so oh, he's because his contracted expired, yeah. uh, he was not. He was he still did Spider Man Two instead. So okay. because that happened, he was still Fox twenty fifth twentieth century Fox was still allowed to put that teaser in the end of the credits just as a promotion, but. People who have never seen, who don't even know about that, they'll be like, okay, so are we going to get a Spider-Man 3 where he teams up with X-Men? That's kind of random, ain't it? Yeah, it's random. It confuses the audience. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, that's like that's like putting a, a, a teaser trailer in a, a what was it, uh, the other X-Men, or I'm sorry, it, it, at the end of fucking Batman and showing a teaser trailer for a... Uh, Green Lantern, no, no, Green Lantern. Yeah, I and mean, it's it's just like, no, sorry, this is not a crossover. This is a teaser trailer. Like, yeah. that's just fucking random. Yeah, it is random because usually you see a lot of movies where they promote shit that's gonna happen in credits, but this one they promote something that ain't ain't part it's, of the it movie. Has it's no just context. a preview. It's, it's just, just a preview. preview. Yeah. It's like, why put that in the middle of the credits yeah. if it's gonna just not even cross? It's it has no connection. Yeah, but yeah, yeah uh, that's really all I've got. I mean, there's yeah. so much more we can talk about, but we. Pretty much covered all we covered really all of it. Everybody's got their own opinions, but I know this is our opinion. And uh, like I like I say, if you like the film, that's fine. Yeah. You know, more power to you. It's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's, it's just not yeah. for. It's just not for me. I mean, I like the first one, all right. But watching after watch the second one, it did make me want to go back and watch the third Spider. -Man. And I'm, I'm actually it's kind of get me a little worried about the hopes of three and four because mm -hmm. they are making a three and a fourth one, which the fourth is supposed to be the final one. Yeah, it's supposed to end it. Three, we already got the hint that it's the Sinister Six. Yeah. Oh, Doc, Doc, no. uh, Doc Ock, supposedly they're going to put in Doc Ock, Rhino, Vulture. Vulture. Uh, I'm not sure who else they're going to get because I'm not promoting them. Because they, did, they didn't really promote much of them. They promoted Doc Ock, Vulture, and Rhino. And but then they started disappearing when they got to more suits, which could be the other. Yeah. But oh, they're not trying to promote those. Speaking things. of that, there's also the guy who pretty much sets up the center stage, who's the shadow guy. You don't yeah. see his face. He was at the end of the first movie. Yeah. Because he was in the scene with the lizard. I'm not sure who that guy's name is because I keep wondering who that is. But. Which is ironically because I watched the uh, first one. Uh, what's funny about the first uh, Amazing Spider-Man last night I watched is the fact that uh, um, the lizard guy, he also went to prison like Harry does in the end. So are they saving instead of killing him off, are they like gonna save him from something? They, like, is the lizard man gonna come back? He might be. Like maybe he is part of the Sinister Six. Or maybe like, because he now recognizes that he's because you remember at the end he kind of turns good. Yeah. So maybe they might use some villains to be good because you got to think when he fights uh, Carnage, Venom, and Green Goblin, I think with him being Spider Man and Black Cat helping him, I think that's still not enough. No. I think he'll finally. I think the laser might help him. I mean, I think a lot of people. Maybe Harry might transform in the movie and turn good. Because I think really Venom and Carnage is going to be his real battle. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so much more, but like, I mean, overall, there's some good things I did like about the film. Like, the 3D was good. The performances were fine, with the exception of Jamie Foxx and Green Goblin. Green Goblin was good. Was good. And I like what they were kind of I I like the concept of what they were trying to do with the story with his backstory with his father. Yeah. But they didn't do it to they they didn't really explain much of it. Uh, they're uh as much as they're trying to top the original and bring backstory like his sad ending of his family dying and stuff. They're not using enough of it. They're using like they're speeding up and getting it over. Yeah. Them. They're they're focused on other things that are yeah. more important. But because uh, that was one of the things I did like about the first one. There was more and more backstory. Uh, should we uh, talk about our uh, 
yeah, the movie we're going to go see. Yeah, we're about to go see uh, Neighbors, and I know that movie's been out for a while, or since last weekend. Uh, I've heard some good things about the film, but like some people are saying that it's a very different kind of raunchy <coughs> comedy. But it looks good. It looks I good. I think it's going to be good. Um, and I find, I think I'm going to see the first film I ever liked, Zach, Zach Efron. Efron yeah, because I know... He's playing a stiffler type. Yeah, he's well, playing pretty much his role that Sean William Scott would have played. Yeah, and which I heard uh, people... And i got to agree, I'm kind of worried about seeing this with him seeing him play it. But I actually heard good things about Zach Efron. Before. Yeah. He's pulling it off. Yeah. They said he did really good. They said that, like, his... This is, like, his... It's a very different take for him. You know, it's a very... Well, it's a more good. like more raunchier. Well, high school comedy. musical isn't gonna last forever. I'm no, glad. <laughs> he needs to get out of that way. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I do. I, I could buy Zac Efron better than fucking Channing Tatum. Like as far as those young crowds, you know, for women yeah, and shit. Channing Tatum is kind of annoying. Yeah, and uh, but sadly, yeah. you you will probably see him in bigger roles that are gonna be epic movies. Yeah, you know they still got him lined up for Dirty Dancing remake. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, that's really all I've got. I mean, yeah. there there's so much more we can talk about. Like I said, we we pretty much covered over an hour now. So, yeah. but I mean, I, I just wanted this is just one or this is just one of my this is a special review I wanted to get because I've been trying to get a co-host review for a while, and I figure now is the time to do yeah. co-host reviews with me anytime that I have my friends that are available. Yeah. So I mean, uh, if you're available next time, we'll, we'll do. We'll do. Hopefully, we could try to do it tonight. Yeah. Try to do a double since we did this. We could come back tonight and do another, so we'll have a double. Yeah. Review, you know. And then next. Maybe week, it's a good. Hopefully, it's a positive review yeah. instead of this one. Well, we I mean, it's it's got to be better than this because yeah. I guarantee you, no matter if Neighbors is bad or good, it's it'll still, still better than fucking Spider Man. It probably will always still top. Yeah. I've already actually heard it actually top. It did. It's number one. Yeah, well, except, well, this weekend will be Godzilla is out this weekend, so I'm not gonna be able. To, I definitely will see. Yeah. That now I'm not gonna be able to see Godzilla this weekend because there's I'm seeing it in Tulsa. So yeah. when I go see it in IMAX, I'll be doing a review of that. So. I might actually see it here since I ain't got the yeah, time, time yeah, to go but, to uh, Tulsa to see it in IMAX. But yeah, overall, I'd say just if you want to see it just for the three, if you have a three TV. Just wait for it on deep Blu-ray 3D and watch it there, and then watch probably just watch scenes of Harry in it. Or you think they'll release it in 3D, uh, Malco? I think so. Yeah, they, they they show 3D films there. Yeah, I might as well, I might just go see it like that, you know, because I ain't got time and money to go to IMAX, so I'll just probably watch it. Here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's it. They, I gotta use the restroom, but yeah, um, but that's the real I got. I hope yeah. I hope everyone has a good rest of the weekend, and we'll be back. Hopefully, both of us. Well, he'll be back with yeah, tonight. Uh, tonight with with neighbors. So until then, hope everyone has a good rest of the week. Has a good uh, evening, and we'll be back in our next review. See you. <laughs>